what I'm going to show you today is the common exam for a pediatric ankle. And Blake has been so kind to let us draw on his ankle. So you have topographical anatomy. I don't suggest you do this at every visit, but it would be pretty cool, OK? So in an exam, <clears throat> when I'm talking to a patient, basically I'll say, so Blake, tell me why you're here today. Blake broke his ankle on a trampoline. He already knows that, right? Why does he know that? Because he's smart, right? <clears throat> and that's what he was told. All he knows is, I twisted my ankle on a trampoline, and it's probably broken, OK? How did that happen? Um, I fell on the hard part of the trampoline. What were you doing at the time? <coughs> Playing with my sister. Were you doing any flips? Yes, so he was doing flips on a trampoline. It's fun, right? So try to gain a report of your patient. So I saw Blake walk in. I took a look at how he walked. You know, he's, he's not going to limp. We actually had to try him limp yesterday, and it looked more like, uh, like he may have had a neurologic disorder. So we decided not to <laughs> allow Blake to walk because we didn't want to confuse you guys. We tried to teach him a limp. It's really not easy to teach a limp if you don't have to do it. So we're just going to start. So, I basically look and examine. He's got shorts on, which really, really helps me tremendously. If the patient doesn't wear him, wear shorts. If you can just roll the pants up to above here so we can see the knees and you can sort of assess the, the quads, the femur. And then we go right into the exam. So I'm going to take your shoes off if you don't mind, OK? So it's important to have the shoes off, too, and socks off so you can actually see the feet. And we go right into our exam. And then when we examine, you talk to the patient, you look. Start palpating, and I typically palpate the proximal tibia. Any pain there? And remember, for that Mason new injury I told you about, what typically wouldn't happen in the kid Blake's age, proximal fibula, any pain? OK. And then I'll palpate down the fibula, palpate down the tibia, feel the back of the calf for any swelling, pain, heat, redness, just to make sure we're not missing something else. And then you start coming down to the ankle. Remember, I told you I like to examine anteriorly first. So I come down here, and I can hit the, the distal tibial physis right here. So if he has pain there, it may very well be a Salter-Harris fracture or a growth plate fracture of the distal tibia. Then I can come down here right between the tibia and the navicular, and that's the anterior ankle joint. And if the patient has pain here and some swelling, there could be a possibility of a uh, cartilaginous defect in the ankle there. Um, and then while we're there, we can also come down right here to the navicular, and you can palpate for a possible capsular strain. And then your hand can bring you down here just to make sure there's no foot pain at the Liz Frank joint, and you can extend down the foot. And then because I'm already anterior, what I would typically do is go lateral. And then laterally, we come down, palpate the distal fibula here, and then the synosmosis. So if you squeeze the synosmosis here, any pain? OK. Synosmosis squeeze test could be indicative of a high ankle sprain or a worsening injury if you have a really bad supination external rotation injury or a mason new in an older child. Then we can come down here, say so there's no pain here. Does that hurt? OK, so Blake has pain along the distal fibular physis. So right away, I'm already thinking he may have a growth plate injury. So the distal fibular physis is localized just about a centimeter and a half above the tip of the distal fibula. And then while we're there, we can come to the anterior tibial fibular ligament, palpate there, see if he has any pain. Um, and then while we're down here, palpate the distal tip of the fibula. Any pain here could be indicative of an, uh, an avulsion injury off the distal fibula. And then we get to the lateral ankle ligaments. Okay. The anterior tibial fibular ligament, palpate there. Ankle sprain, calcaneal fibular ligament, palpate there. Possible sprain, and then posterior tibial fibular ligament, palpate there. While you're out here, you can also palpate the, po uh, the perineal tendon palpate along there, any pain along there could be indicative of perineal tendonitis. 
and that perineal tendon leads right down to the fifth metatarsal base. And you palpate there, and the patient, if he has any pain there, it may be one of the four toe injuries that I told you about. Now, typically, the Jones injury is going to hurt a bit more distal right there. But because the injury is so painful, the patient may not be able to delineate between a base versus a Jones. So that's your anterior and lateral ankle ligament exam. Now, for illustration purposes, we drew the medial here. Typically, you wouldn't try to examine the medial side on the other side, but for the camera, this works much better. <clears throat> so we come down medial, <clears throat> and we get to the distal tibia, palpate along here, and then you get the distal tibial physis again. Then your posterior tibialis tendon, you could palpate as well here. If you have that, it may have tendonitis. And that tends to lead right down here to the foot where you may have an accessory navicular. Coming back up to the distal part of the tibia here, palpating here could indicate a distal tibial avulsion fracture. And then right here, the deltoid ligament. And you can also capture, if you're medial, you can also capture your navicular here. And then, again, for illustration's sake, we're just going to roll him this way. And then posterior, you can palpate down along the Achilles tendon for any Achilles tendonitis. And then along here, anywhere in the calcaneus, if you squeeze and they have pain, there's a possibility of Seaver's apophysitis. So those are sort of the most common palpation areas and what we expect with each one of those. Now, the patient can have pain in all of those and sometimes happens. So it's important to, uh, when, I, when I talk to patients, because you may not have the most, um, the greatest historian, let's call them. They tend not to be the greatest historian. So the one thing I like to do, and especially if you start palpating with a younger child, they'll look down. And when they look down, they say, yes, that hurts. So I do a little bit of a cover test here. And then I say, OK, I'm going to give something a number, one and two. OK, this is number one, distal fibular physis. And then I go right to the ATFL, because that's the most common sprain. What hurts more, one or two? And then I'll come around to another couple of body parts. So I'll go to distal tibial physis. It hurts num more, number one or two. And when I sort of get an average of, OK, we're hurting right here. And I have normal x-rays. My suspicion is we're looking at a growth plate fracture of the distal fibula. So that's a good trick you can do to sort of delineate and tease out where the patients are having pain. And then after you've done your palpation, you want to go to your provocative exams. So really, there's only two provocative exams that we're going to work on today. One is the tower tilt, and the other one's the anterior drawer. So, for the tower tilt, you do it in plantar flexion, in neutral if you can get them in neutral, and then in dorsiflexion. So when we start in plantar flexion, here about 10 to 15 degrees of plantar flexion, and you tilt the ankle this way, if the patient has pain or instability, it's likely an anterior talofibular ligament sprain. There. Now we bring them up to neutral and inversion, and they have pain. It's a calcaneal fibrillar ligament sprain. Now, the same thing holds true when we come to neutral medially and evert the ankle. Let me get my hand in there. And if they have pain, it could be a deltoid ligament sprain. And then, Dorsiflexing the ankle and inverting could indicate a posterior talofibrillar ligament sprain. So you want to be sure that you're doing it in all three dimensions. So plantar flexion, neutral, dorsiflexion. Now you don't have to be 20 degrees of dorsiflexion. You don't really have to push them up. They're not going to want you to do that anyway. But it gives you an idea of where the sprain is. And then to test the stability of the ankle, Basically, uh, we do an anterior drawer. Now, the best, play, the best way to do that is patient lying supine and bend their knee. But for illustration purposes, we're going to try to take, we're going to bend the knee up a little bit more 
and take the hamstrings and take the, uh, the uh, calf muscles out of the equation. And when we do an anterior drawer, and we'll demonstrate this in this plane, and then we'll demonstrate it from the anterior plane. Now, he's probably not going to have a positive anterior drawer because he's not unstable. But I'm going to do it the way I typically do it, and I'm going to move my hand so you guys can see it a little bit better. But you basically grab the heel, use the tibia as your fulcrum, and you pull forward. Did that hurt? Look like it hurt. So you're in a little bit of plantar flexion here, and you pull forward. And you guys can sort of see on the video that he does have some translation. Now, most of that is skin, and I'm just trying to exaggerate to prove a point here. He actually has a little bit of translation. He's fighting me. He has a little bit of translation here. And then when you come anteriorly, you can see it. Now, when I move my hand, you maybe see it a little bit better. And then you get like this. Relax for me, bud. Let it go nice and loose. There you go. And that's your anterior drawer. So those are your two provocative tests. Tower tilt, anterior drawer. Now, there's, I'm, I know from the PT and the ATC st standpoint, there may be a lot more tests that you guys do on the back end, and I'd like to hear about them in our discussion. Uh, but this is basically our ankle exam, how we do every patient every time. And again, I, uh, I didn't say this but on the exam, but I examined the other side first. Now, it becomes a little bit more problematic when they've injured both ankles, right? So you don't have a comparison view. And sometimes you may actually have kids who have ligamentous laxity. And when they do, you do an anterior drawer, and they're lax. And you go to the other side, and they're lax. You're, OK, we, we're, we're dealing with a uh, lax patient. All right, man. No cast for you today. You cool? Yeah? OK. Thanks, brother. <laughs>